What's going on guys, John Elder here from Konami.com and in this video, we're going to start to build out the structure of our dental website with Python and Django. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to start to build out the structure of our website, download and install Django, get all the sort of uh, infrastructure stuff set up and all that good stuff. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to check out codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, so if you haven't been following along, we're building out this dental website. Why a dental website? Well, we want to make money as coders, and a great way to make some quick cash is to go around to the local dentists in your area if they don't have a website, build them one, and then sell it to them for, you know, a couple thousand bucks. So that's the idea behind this series, how to make money with coding. And you can see it's just a very cool, basic uh, dentist website, and that's what we're going to build out in this series. So in this video we're going to start to build out the infrastructure of this thing. So we've already downloaded all the tools we need, Python, Sublime Text, and Git Bash Terminal. Now it's time to actually fire these up and start using them. So let's head over to our terminal here. And the first thing we need to do is create a directory to hold all of our files, right? All the stuff we're going to be working on. So, CD, or, so the command we want is mkdir make directory. And I'm going to save this in the C drive. And let's just call this uh, dentist site. I don't know or dentist web, dentist site, <laughs> doesn't really matter. And then we need to change into that directory, so dentist site. And if we type ls to list the stuff, there's nothing at all in there right now. So that's what we would expect. We just created this, of course, there's nothing in there. So the first thing we need to do is create a virtual environment. And I should say before I go on, I'm not going to go into great detail. Uh, from now on, I'm just going to kind of burn through all this stuff. If you're confused at what I'm doing, if you don't really know Django that well, I've got a ton of Django courses on my website. Use coupon code YouTube1 <laughs> and you can sign up and learn in great depth if you want. So I'll talk about things as I'm doing them a little bit, but I'm not going to go into great detail in this video or in these videos because it would just take forever. And uh, there's already stuff on my channel and on my website that'll teach you this in more depth if you want. So like I said, we're going to create a virtual environment. So the command is Python dash M and then VENV stands for virtual environment and VENV just comes with Python. So it should just work. We don't have to install it or anything. And now we need to name our virtual environment. And I just like to call it virtual. And if we give this a second to do its thing, it should be done. Now, if we type in LS to list the stuff, you see, we have this virtual directory, which is what we want. So, We've installed it, now we need to turn it on. And to do that, we type source, and then the name of that directory, and then scripts and activate. And when we do, we see this virtual thing pops up above the command prompt. And that means our virtual environment has been turned on. To turn it back off again, you can type deactivate. And you'll notice now it's gone again. So we wanna turn this on, and I hit the up arrow key a couple of times to circle back to the previous commands. And uh, okay, now it's back. So. All right, uh, the command, if you're on a Mac or a Linux to start the virtual environment, I think is source bin activate. But don't quote me on that. You may have to Google it, but I think that's the command if you're on Linux or Mac. Okay, so we've got our virtual environment set up, but if we pip freeze, we can see there's not been anything installed in the virtual environment and we need to install Django before we can move forward. So let's go pip install Django. And we just want the latest version, which is three point something. So that's fine. And you'll notice it's also installing SQL parse, Python time zone, this ass giraffe, which I'm not sure what is, and Django itself. This usually takes a second or two, 30 seconds or less usually. So we'll just give this a second to, to do its thing. And uh, an interesting thing is you can install different versions of Django by using that same command and then just putting a double equal to sign and then just saying whatever version you want to install. So keep that in mind. All right, so Django has been installed, and if we pip freeze now, we can see, sure enough, yep, all this stuff has been installed. So now we're ready to create our Django project. So let's go Django-admin.py, and then start project. And what do we want to name this thing? Let's just call it dentist. Dentist? Yeah, let's just call it dentist. <laughs> all right, now, so now, 
if we ls, we can see this dentist directory has been created. So we need to move into that directory. So cd change directory into dentist. Now when we ls, we see this manage.py file, which tells us we're exactly where we need to be. So okay, now let's fire up sublime text and add this project. So go to project, add fo folder to project. And you just want to navigate to your C drive and then find that dentist site directory. Where is it? Dentist site. And then click on dentist and boom, add the folder. And so now you see this dentist top level directory and then this bottom one as well. It has all of our settings.py file and our urls.py file and all that good stuff. So now we can come back to the terminal here and go uh, Python manage.py run server to run the server to see if everything was installed correctly. And it says watching for file changes. So we know it's the server's running. So now we can fire up our web browser, go to localhost colon 8000. And when we do, we hopefully we see this little rocket ship shaking around. This is the default Django page when you create a new Django project. So we know we're good to go. So now we can come back here and let's break out of here, control C. And you can see we get all kinds of weird errors and things, which need, which means we need to migrate the database. So that's always what you want to do right after you create a Django project because the Django itself comes with something called an admin area and the admin area has a database connected to it. So we have to migrate that database. So it's just python manage.py migrate. Okay, so those things are all migrated and now we're good to go. So now the final thing we need to do to get our project up and running is to create an app within our project. You know, Django loves apps and to create our own website, we need to create an app for that website. So we can go Python manage.py. It's always Python manage.py almost always. And then start app and let's just call this website. We're creating a website, we'll just call it website. So now if we come back to Sublime Text, we see now there's this website directory and all kinds of stuff in here. So now we need to tell our project, hey, this website app exists. So we do that in our settings.py file in our dentist directory. And I'm gonna get rid of all these comments. I, I can't stand comments. And then just come down here to installed apps and type in website, the name of that app. And don't forget your comment at the end. It's good to do that. Okay, so we're pretty much done. Now we need to fix our urls.py file. This is the next thing you always do when you create a new project. Um, our dentist directory has a urls.py file. Our website directory doesn't. By default, for some reason, Django doesn't create a urls.py. And we want a urls.py file in every root directory of every app we create. And in this project, we're only creating one app, the website app, but it needs its own urls.py file. So I'm just going to copy this and head over here, right click on this website directory, create new file, I'm just going to paste this in. And we don't need this. And we don't need this. So now we can come up here and file save as save this as urls.py. And you can see boom, it pops right up there. And now we're good to go. Okay, so we also need to tinker with this file because we need to let our project know that that new urls.py file exists and we need to include it in this urls.py file, the original urls.py file. So to include it, we have to add include, as we always do. And then we just go path. We want the root directory to include, oops, there we go, website.urls. And be sure to put our comma after that. Okay, go ahead and save this file. Control S, Command S if you're on a Mac, or come up here to File and click Save. And we are pretty much done with this whole dental directory, so we can close it out. Okay, so now we want to very quickly throw up a home page so that we have something going on other than this default page. So let's do that real quick. So first things first we need a templates directory to hold all of our website files, right? So come over to website, right click and create a new folder. And I'm just gonna call it templates. It's the standard thing to do. And inside of here, create a new file. And I'm just gonna type uh, hello world, see if this works. And we can come up here and file save as, and let's save this as home.html. So now we need a URL for this homepage. 
So let's create it here. We just go path and it's going to be the root URL. It's going to be our home page and it's going to point to views.home and let's name this home. Oops. We got to close our, there we go. All right. And be sure to put your comma at the end. So that's our URL. Now we need to create this views.home and to use this views.home, we have to actually import it up here. So let's go from period import views, All right? And the period means from in this directory. So we want to import this views.py file right here. So now we need to create a view for that home page. So we can go define a view and we want to pass in a request. And we want to return to render, which is this thing right up here, right? And what do we want to render? Well, we want to render that request, which is the browser request, and that web page, which is home.html. And then we always want to pass in our context dictionary. Okay, so save this, and that should be good. We've got our view, we've got our URL path, and we've got our home.html template file. Now the only thing left to do is fire this up again and see if it works. So let's go python manage.py run server. All right, server is running, head back to the website, hit reload and hopefully, uh oh, we're getting an error, nothing happened. Unable to connect, what did we do? Control C, oh, we've got all kinds of problems. Website.views has no in attribute home. Oh, did I not? Save my views.py. Oh, define view, define home. There we go. Why didn't you tell me I was doing that? All right, so we create a home view. I just type view. Brain freeze. All right, so now this should work. I'm going to clear the screen and let's run this again. All right, head back over here, hit reload. Boom, hello world. So everything is now working. So just like that, we have our Django project all set up and ready to go. We've got a home page. We've got the URLs all set up. We've got some views. We've got the settings all sorted out the way we want it. And man, that was quick. That was like less than 15 minutes uh, to fly through there and get a basic Django website set up. It's one of the great things about Django. It doesn't take a whole lot of time to whip up, you know, basic websites. And now all we have to do is download and install the template that we need and then tweak the template a little bit and we're done, right? So super fast and we're moving right along. And I think we'll do that in the next video. So I'll show you where to get the template. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about where to find other templates. You know, chances are you're not just gonna wanna build a dental website. You're gonna wanna build a dental website and a plumbing website and a photography website and a, you know all the different little uh, stores and businesses in your area that need a website. So you're gonna need templates for each one. We'll talk about all that and uh, start building out our little templated website in the next video. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Man, that really helps and it doesn't cost you anything. And check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. The page is $49 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDF versions of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 70,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and we'll see you in the next video.